Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and in this video, we're going to be vibe coding a little whack a mole game using ChatGPT and React. So, I just have a little prompt here for ChatGPT. I'm saying we're going to code a whack a mole game using React and normal CSS. You'll give me the code in small increments, and I'll be explaining it. All right, so while that's working, I want to show you my setup. So, over here, I just have a basic little React app set up on StackBlitz, which is like an online IDE. So you guys can set this up wherever you use your React, but this is where all the code is gonna be showing up. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do down here, according to ChatGPT, is set up the basic game board. So why don't we do that? I'm just gonna take this JSX over here and I'm gonna paste it in and let's see what we have. So we have a div that's game and then we have a little whack-a-mole title and then down here we have this grid. So the grid is an array of nine elements and we're mapping them out into these different holes. And then I'm guessing there's gonna be some sort of an index that indicates like where that is. So now we're gonna put some CSS in here. Let's pop that in. So we have, oh, this is actually looking pretty cool already. So let me see if I can move that over. Uh, so we have the body, which is, yeah, just like sans serif font, everything's displayed. I think I'm gonna move this. So a line item center, that would mean that it's in the center. I'm gonna move it up top just so you guys can see it. I think my head's probably in the way. But that's like the whole body of the document. And then for the game, everything is just aligned in the center. And then for this grid, so this is where all of these little teal square or circles are. That's gonna be grid display where we're repeating three columns at 100 pixels each with a 10 pixel gap. And then for each one of the holes, uh, it's just width 100 pixels and height 100 pixels. All right, so let's see if we can move on to the next step. Awesome, time to spawn a mole randomly. So we're gonna update and it looks like we need to first import use state and use effect. So let's do that. And then down here, we're gonna keep track of a piece of state which is called mole index. So mole index I'm guessing is gonna tell us which uh, which one of these little circles the mole is in, right? So if it's zero, it'll be here. If it's one, it'll be here, etc. cetera, up, up until nine. And then down here, it looks like we have a little bit of change to the JSX. So for this grid, we're checking to see if I is equal to the mole index. And if it is, then we're showing the mole. Okay, so that's gonna be inside of the div. So right here, if I is equal to the mole index, in other words, if this is the circle that has the mole in it, then show a little span with the mole and then it just has a class mole. All right, and then we'll add some CSS styling for that as well. So let's see, put that down here. And actually we can probably simulate this by change. So if I change this to one, for example, or zero or two, you can see it, it changes where the mole shows up. So what we'll need to do is kind of set this randomly and then if it's null, it doesn't show up at all. So we'll need to kind of set this randomly and I think there is code to do that. Yeah, so here in the use effect, let's take a look at what this is doing. So in the use effect, we're creating an interval and we're saying that, well actually we're creating a random index. So this is gonna be zero to nine uh, and then actually I think it would be zero to eight and then we're setting that to be the mole index So you can see here every 800 milliseconds the mole is kind of changing right and that's because for this interval It runs this code every 800 milliseconds and then we're setting this randomly All right, cool. So that looks pretty good to me. Let's move on to the next step Ooh, time to make it interactive and bonk the mole and keep score. All right, so uh, the first thing I think we'll do is add in the whack mole function. This looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and add this in. This would be when we click on one of those circles. So it gets the index of the circle that we clicked on. And then if that's equal to the mole index, then we set the score plus one. And then we also get rid of the mole. So remember, if the mole is set to, or if mole index is null, then the mole isn't showing up. So then that would be like equivalent to hitting it and bonking it down. And then I'm guessing we need to add an on click. Yeah, so then down here, we're gonna add a click. We're gonna add a click handler. So on click, and that's just gonna be here on this div. So let me see if I can move this over. Yeah, so now for each one of these circles, whenever you click on it, it's gonna call whack-a-mole with the index of the circle. And then if that's the one that has the mole in it, then we increase the score. All right, and then let's see what else we need to do. I think that's actually it. So do we have a display? Oh, we need to be able to display the score. Right, so right here, 
that's just going to go right down below this. And I think we need to add in that score variable as well. So we'll just add this. See, the one thing about when you're programming with ChatGPT is like you have to kind of understand how the app is structured or figured out, at least in this way of vibe coding, where we're sort of like manually copying, pasting things in. But this is a way of using AI that's I found to be really effective where, you know, you can pass it your code and then it's able to kind of, you know, surgically tell you exactly where things are that, that need to be um, modified and edited. So now if I'm clicking this and I'm actually going to change this. So for the whole, let's make it a cursor pointer. All right. So now you can see whenever I click the mole, it, not only does it disappear, but it also increases my score by one. Awesome. So that's looking pretty good. Okay. So let's do next step. I think there's probably a couple more things we can add into this, but you can see we basically already have a functional whack-a-mole game. That's kind of crazy. All right. So there's a couple more pieces of state we're going to add in time left and game over. So time left is going to tell us how much time is left in the game, obviously, and then game over whether or not the game has finished or not. So this is a Boolean. And then why don't we set this equal to like 10 or something? instead of 30 that way it's a little bit easier for us to uh to demonstrate okay so then there's a couple of other things so it looks like there's a use effect here and oh i don't know actually see this is it kind of like changed things so i'm actually just going to copy both of these and then we'll get rid of the one that's already here so yeah, we're adding two new use effects. One is checking to see if the game is over, it returns. Otherwise, uh, we set the random index and set the random null. Okay, so this is pretty much what we were doing before. I think that was the same one. And then over here, if the uh, we have a countdown, so it's setting in another interval for a thousand milliseconds. So every second, it's gonna set the time left. And if it's less than or equal to one, then we're going to clear the interval for the countdown. So in other words, we'll stop counting down and then we'll set the game over equal to true and then we'll get rid of the mole. Otherwise, we're just going to subtract T from one. So essentially here we have two intervals that are at play, right? This interval is determining where the mole is going to show up. And then this interval down here is keeping track of how much time is left in the game. And then, you know, depending on what's happening with these different pieces of state, we need to do different things. All right, so that, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm guessing we're gonna need to add in, yeah, okay, so we'll add in two more things in here. So one would be for the time left and one would be for the game over. So that's gonna go down here in the JSX. So this will just show us how much time is left and then game over. If that's true, then we'll have this that says game over. All right, so time left, it should start out at 10 and game over should start out at false. And then is there anything else? Yeah, so we're going to add in the CSS for that. OK, yeah, so that just kind of gives it some styling. Now, I'm a little confused and I wonder if we refresh. Yeah, OK, so now I can play the game. You can see time left. And then once it gets to zero, it should give us a game over and then the mole should disappear. Yeah, perfect. OK, awesome. That's looking pretty good. OK, now let's see if there's anything else what's left i think there's probably one left which would be the restart button it said i'm super close the core game loop is done here's a quick overview of what's left all right so we can have this little restart game so this is just going to be like and again it's kind of interesting here it, it, chat gbt is just kind of giving me this as an option and then i kind of have to determine where it goes so we could put the restart game button and why don't we just put that down below or actually i'll just put it up here so that way i can see it so the restart button, oh, whoops. And why is this not working? Hold on, what happened? Oh, and it's because we have this restart game variable. So then let's add this function up here, restart game. So now whenever I click restart, it resets everything. So in this case, we were doing 10 milliseconds. Okay, so we have that little restart button and then there's a couple of little styles that we can add in for that as well. Let's pop these over here into style.css. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Now we have a fully functional whack-a-mole game that's working and we didn't even really need to write any code because ChatGPT did all of it for us. 
So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.